Gradient Descent is an optimization algorithm used to minimize some function by iteratively moving in the direction of the steepest descent, as defined by the negative of the gradient. Imagine you are blindfolded in a rough terrain, and your goal is to reach the lowest altitude. One of the simplest strategies you can use is to feel the ground in every direction and take a step in the direction where the ground is descending the fastest. The rough terrain is analogous to the cost function, and minimizing the cost function is analogous to trying to reach lower altitudes. Feeling the slope of the terrain around you is analogous to calculating the gradient. The gradient tells us the incline or slope of the cost function, hence to minimize the cost function, we move in the direction opposite to the gradient. The learning rate is a positive scalar value that determines the size of each step in the gradient descent process. If the step size is too small, the gradient descent process can be slow, whereas if it is too large, the gradient descent can overshoot the minimum and may fail to converge or even diverge. Let's look at the concept of the algorithm. Imagine a height field from the side view. We will use p.y to represent relative height. We then compute the gradient of height. Multiply this with a step size and add this onto p. This will move points along the gradient of the height. This is known as gradient ascent. If you negate the gradient or the cost attribute, in example the height attribute, then the points will be moving along the negative gradient of the height. This is known as gradient descent. Gradient descent will converge to a local minima rather than the global minima. Whereas gradient ascent will converge to a local maxima rather than global maxima. In mathematical analysis, the maxima and minima of a function, known collectively as extrema, are the largest and smallest value of the function, either within a given range, the local or relative extrema, or on the entire domain of a function, the global or absolute extrema. It's pretty easy to understand them intuitively from this drawing. Lastly, we need a way to determine when to stop. A popular choice for the termination criteria is when the cost stops reducing. Let's see how to implement this in Houdini now. Create a grid with 200 by 200 divisions. Deform it using some noise. I found this particular shape before, which is what I will use. But feel free to use any noise parameters that you find appealing. Now create the cost attribute using the height of each point. We already know how to compute the gradient from a scalar attribute, but this time I will show how to do it using the measure sub for variety. <laughs> 
As you can see, the gradients look a bit noisy due to the surface detail. We will deal with this later. Also make sure to change the element type to points, as we want the gradient to be a point attribute. Because we are doing a gradient descent first, we need to negate the gradient or the cost attribute. Scatter some points on the grid. Now we will write the gradient descent code. First define some parameters. Min dist is the minimum distance that must be traversed before the path is turned into a polygonal curve. Instead of creating the points on the spot, we want to gather point positions in an array first, and only create a line using them if they meet the min disk requirement. We also want to store the distance traversed at each point in an array to normalize them into 0-1 range. We first set P to the current point position. Then we have to project this point position back onto the surface, in case the point is not actually on the surface using the xyz dist function. Now we look up the new p using the prim uv function based on the hit primitive and the primitive uv values. We do the same for the gradient so we know what the gradient is at this exact position on the surface. Append both the position and the distance which is zero so far. Now we want to keep track of the total distance traveled and use this to check against the max list using a while loop. First move P using the normalized gradient multiplied by the step size. We have to normalize the gradient in this case so that we can make sure it is exactly the size of the step size. You can copy paste the nearest surface projection, new P and gradient lookup using prim UV code here. Now compute the distance between the last point and the current point position. Here we need the actual distance, so we can't use squared distance. We also need to define some tolerance value. If the distance between the last point and the current point is less than the threshold, we break the loop. We add the distance to the total distance. Append P to pose and sum this to this array. We want to know how much distance we traveled for each point. In the last step, we check if we traveled more or equal to minimum distance. If so, we proceed to create the polygon line. We will just loop over the pose array and create points using these. We have to gather point indices in an array as the addPrim function requires an index array rather than a position array. We need to remove the point itself, as we are recreating the nearest projection of it on the surface. Just create the parameters and set some values. As you can see, we have successfully implemented gradient descent. I'm just gonna color the points using a ramp by the normalized distance. 
The infrared colors Houdini uses are not the same as the ones I use. As you can see, the lines are colored using the ramp, but it doesn't look like they use the full range of the color ramp. If you set max this to 1, you can see the result looks the same, but the colors change. The reason for this is simple. We are not breaking the loop as soon as the cost attribute doesn't get any lower, but rather break the loop when we reach max distance, and as such the points bunch up at the valleys. Before we do this, we will also refine the result by blurring the grid before creating the cost attribute. As you can see, the lines are much smoother now. We can do the same for the gradient vectors. Smoothing the gradient vectors gets rid of the noise and the rapid swirling of the vectors. As you increase max list, you can see the lines are getting more and more bunched up in the valleys. We can now implement a new logic to break out of the loop if the cost attribute value is not getting any smaller. First, create a step size multiplier and the cost attribute. Where we sample gradient from the surface, we also need to sample the cost. but also keep track of the last cost. If the cost is greater than the last cost within tolerance, we will reduce the step size using the step size multiplier. Otherwise, do what we were doing before. If the step size gets smaller than the tolerance, we need to break out of the loop. Also make sure to update the last cost. Now you can see we are actually stopping in the valleys. The closer the step size to 1, the higher the chance that the points will find local minima, in example the nearest valley, at the cost of performance. As you can see, it took 0.3 seconds when the step size multiplier was 0.9 and 1.5 seconds when it was 0.99, 5 times the difference, which is quite significant.
the effect of the step size multiplier is quite apparent. As you can see, the prematurely terminated lines find their way to the local minima as we increase the step size multiplier. You can also bias the distribution of the points so that more points are spread on the peaks rather than valleys as we are going from the peaks into the valleys. In effect, this makes the lines a lot more dense where it matters, given the same number of points. Now we will implement the gradient ascent. So just duplicate the entire network. Invert the cost attribute. And that is all you need to do. Everything else will work just the same. As you can see, the result is just the opposite of the gradient descent. You can also merge them both if you want to cover the entire geometry. We can now move on to using an arbitrary geometry. And with that said, see you guys in the next lesson.